2,000 point score in her career, which began at Oklahoma. This is her third year with Arkansas as the Razorbacks reached the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015. Wright State won the Horizon title. They have a great score in Angel Baker, who is an SEC caliber guard, according to Arkansas head coach Mike Neighbors. We'll keep an eye on Baker. We'll keep an eye on Styles here as well, Tamika, as Arkansas likes to put up the points. And Wright State is a very good defensive team and an outstanding team when it comes to rebounding. Well, it's going to be really important. One of the things you'll look at is Arkansas trying to get started from the outside fast and furious. See the lineups brought to you by Capital One, Jada Roberson, Imani Jefferson with Baker, Jada Wright, and Tyler Frierson for the Raiders who get the game's first points. Arkansas starting five, very familiar with Michaela Daniels, a sophomore leading the charge. There is Dungy trying from outside, Destiny Slocum, Taylor Thomas, and Amber Ramirez, the five for Arkansas, 19 and eight on the season. They won nine games in the SEC this year. They have won five of their last six games. Their last game was a loss to Ole Miss in the SEC tournament. It's gonna be really interesting. One of the things for Wright State that they're gonna to have to do is establish them from themselves down low. First basket they had in the paint. That is going to be one of the keys of the game, not just to get the ball to the basket, but to make drives like that and get to the free throw line. Imani Jefferson taking it to the hoop. You gotta love the crossover right there. Forcing Slocum to have to play defense. I think Imani Jefferson and, and the Raiders are going to really focus on getting the ball down low and forcing Arkansas to guard them. Great start for the Raiders. Jefferson finishes off the three-point play. The freshman from Northport, Florida. Remember the all-freshman team in the horizon. Dungy Ramirez loves the corner, knocks down the three. And that's where Arkansas is so good. They have so many different threats around the three-point line. You try to take one person away, and you got to worry about the other four. So it's going to be interesting to see how Lake State guards and defend every single person on the floor. Jada Wright tries to feed it inside to Frierson. Frierson fought for it. She touched it last. It'll be Arkansas basketball. Mike Neighbors. The Arkansas alum getting this Arkansas program to the NCAA tournament in his fourth season. They would have gone to the NCAA tournament last year as an art, a large bid. Of course, we know that did not happen, so it goes into the books as their first trip since 2015, a six-year absence officially as offensive foul called here on Wright State on the push. Well, Coach Davis, it's been a lot of fun just watching him develop this Arkansas program and the one thing you remember from years back is he's established a culture of winning. And you can tell when the players, the swag that they have, the way that they play together, the, the shot. I mean, he wants to go. His offense is let's run and try to get as many shot attempts as we can. Not really looking at the misses. He's really looking at how many shot attempts can we get up. Now you get an idea here, too. Wright State will try to control the pace a little bit. Frierson. Veteran post presence for Wright State. Can't get that one to go. Uh, every single possession that Wright State has had, they've tried to get in two feet in the paint and try to score. Dungy gets on the scoreboard for her first two. Dungy on the drive, we showed you before, averaging better than 22 points a game. Good for first in the SEC. Roberson. And a rebound for Ramirez. Knocked away by Frierson. And Angel Baker, the ball, the person with the ball right now, she's the player to watch for this right state team. Baker averaging a team best 18 points a game, first team all conference for the second straight year. MVP of the Horizon Championship when she averaged 25 points a game, and Frierson gets called for the foul. I think that's what Dungy does such a good job at. She figures out a way to get herself to the basket. You can see when she's getting ready to attack, kind of like that hesitation she does, and she gets in the paint, she gets in the body of the defender. Frierson picks up the personal foul. She'll check out. She'll play in bursts. She has battled 
a chronic right knee issue. It's congenital her entire career, but she's the only per player to start all 26 games for Wright State this year is Dungy at the free throw line. Get used to us saying Dungy at the free throw line as you take a look at Trina Merriweather, the head coach at Wright State in her fifth season, 112 victories, the Horizon League coach of the year for a third time. For all the three-pointers made and driving to the basket, Arkansas gets so much of their offense from the free throw line. Dungy especially came in tied for the National League in free throws made this season. Well, it's interesting the way that Arkansas plays because they have so many shooters on the outside. Okay. Ayla Daniels will get called for that foul. Angel Baker will go to the free throw line. But because Arkansas has so many shooters on the outside, it opens up the paint. And Taylor Thomas is one of the players down low that floats around. But I think because it's so open, it, it allowed players to be able to penetrate. And if you're not playing that one-on-one -on -one defense, it's easy to get to the free throw line. Either you make it, you get fouled and go to the free throw line, or you get the and one. Baker at the free throw line. Free throws are a challenge for Wright State this season, although Baker makes them both 60% from the line. They are 5 for 11 in the Horizon title game, but they use stingy defense to knock off IUPUI 53-41. Now, that was back on March 9th, so it's been a little while since they've played as they kick off the rust here in the opening minutes against Arkansas, but they're hanging tough in the opening minutes, even at seven. Roberson. Rebound for Thomas. And Trina Merriweather, that's one of the things she said as far as jump shots and the way that her team shoots. She said, look, we're not the best shooting team, and it's really going to be emphasized for us to get the ball down low. And they've settled for some outside shots, and they've been able to get inside and get to the free throw line early. Shamari hails into the game for Wright State. Destiny Jackson as well. She gets her first points. The redshirt freshman from Lexington, Kentucky, puts Wright State on top by two. That was a two, so it's 9-7. See off the miss, they want to run against Arkansas. Not afraid in that situation to run with the high-octane Razorbacks. And this is what Wright State really does well, Tamika. They will get on the offensive glass and get second chance opportunities and cash in. Well, second chance opportunity is going to be the big part for this Wright State team. Not only is it rebounding because they do a great job rebounding, but Katrina Merriweather said, we can't just rebound. We have to knock down and make second chance point. And you saw the first two right there. Good strong take by Destiny Slocum for her first points, averaging 15 and a half a game, second on the team. Inside of four and a half to go, first quarter. Baker, shot clock at seven. Roberson. Batted away by Ramirez, last touched by Wright State. And it'll be Arkansas ball when we come back to Austin. Wright State up too early. The NCAA. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. University of Texas in Austin. First round matchup, Arkansas and Wright State getting going in the NCAA tournament. When we talk about Wright State, we talk about defense and rebounding. And really, Mike Neighbors, the Arkansas head coach, who has great respect for Trina Merriweather, says they go way back to earlier in their coaching days. This is not a great matchup for Arkansas, a four seed jumping into the tournament against a 13 seed in Neighbors' estimation. Well, I think the big thing you got to look at is because Wright State plays such great defense that Amber Ramirez just coughs the ball up without any pressure. But Wright State will force you to make mistakes like that because of the way they play. They'll switch up their defenses, which is what Trina Merriweather talked about. We know how good Arkansas is. We can't play one defense. We're going to have to switch it up. And that's what we'll see all afternoon. Got it out of bounds by Arkansas. Jalen Mason into the game for the Razorbacks. 
Yeah, Trina Merriweather said the turning point this year where they had a couple of losses to Robert Morris, they changed their lineup, they focused more on defense, and they decided they were going to make this year worth it, not go through the motions. I'd say in the end it was pretty worth it. They're in the NCAA tournament <laughs> after winning the Horizon. And that'll be a three-second violation. No matter what, Wright State will defend and rebound because in the words of their head coach, we can't shoot it great anyways. <laughs> so that's the harsh assessment by Trina of her team. But defense travels, especially come tournament well, time. And it's not just defense. It's the defense and it's the rebounds. And Chelsea Dungy gets called for the offensive foul. Watch Jada Robertson. She will defend. She will stay in front. She is one of those players you have got to be careful when you're driving into her. You see she keeps her hand straight up manages to stay in front of Chelsea Dungy and when Chelsea get going to the basket Eric I don't know about you but you better get out of her way because she, she will run you over I'll give Roperson credit she stood her ground there's Jefferson nifty little dribble against pretty good defender in Mason but again on the offensive glass Wright State continues to fight and they've got a second chance well, defense and rebounds, and specifically the offensive rebound, said this earlier, but it is really important. This is what Trina Merriweather said. It's not just about getting the offensive rebound. It's being able to finish and get those second chance points. Already five offensive rebounds, and Arkansas's defense with a breakdown, and it leads to a layup for Wright State. Jackson's got four. You saw the five offensive rebounds making the most of those chances. Michaela Daniels answers back with a three for Arkansas. Well, Michaela Daniels is one of those players for Arkansas that you love to watch because she's always so steady. She has consistently been steady. Only a sophomore, but the poise that she plays with, how she just controls the team, great. This is that backdoor cut in the last possession for Wright State. Oh, Daniels, outstanding defender, very good offensively, one of four Razorbacks averaging in double figures this year. They are scoring on average 83 points a game, which is good for fourth in the country, but they need to make shots because they're not a very good rebounding team. They are a minus eight last in the SEC this year in rebounding margin, and as we've talked about, Wright State, an outstanding rebounding team, so that is an edge for them. And if Arkansas doesn't make shots, that's going to keep Wright State in the game. Well, when you're relying on players to knock down shot when Arkansas is knocking down shot, they look, it looked great. I mean, they pushed the ball up the floor. Trina Merriweather said they worked on a drill all week long. They didn't even take the ball out of bounds just to try to emulate how fast Arkansas moved the ball and gets up, whether it's a make or miss. So when it's on, it's on. Roberson's got another one. Now, that was something, too, that when you play Arkansas, you can watch it on tape and on TV, but when you see it in the game, can you keep up with their pace and their speed? And that's what Wright State was trying to recreate in practice. Instead of a 94-foot court, the ball was up, what, towards 80 feet left of the court and just say, let's that's where the ball's going to be against Arkansas. And again, good defensive play. Baker reaches in for the tie-up. Wright State ball. Wright State, they do... They're doing a great job of helping each other on defense. So Arkansas, what they're going to have to do, what they have done, is they spread the floor out more because they have shooters spread the floor, force Wright State to spread with you, and then those backdoor cuts that you're trying to make those passes are a little bit more open. Frierson back into the game, defended by Aaron Barnum, who's off the bench for Arkansas. Marquisha Davis also into the game. There she is defensively number one for the Razorbacks. Trying to slow down Baker, who has to throw it up with the shot clock winding down, and everything's dropping in right now for Wright State. Well, that was a play that Angel Baker can make. You heard it earlier. Coach Neighbors said she is an SEC caliber guard. She, that doesn't just mean the SEC conference. That means any conference. She is one of those scorers, one of those players in our league, in the NCAA, that can step up and make really big plays. Shot clock is off as Baker will settle in for one final shot here for Wright State. Baker draws a crowd. Down to two seconds. One's going to be a deep try for Wright State, and it drops for the Raiders at the buzzer. 
Destiny Jackson beats the buzzer in Wright State on top by eight after one. Destiny Jackson can't say enough. That up. Yeah. What are you saying, man? Oh, yeah, the line. bench is up. <laughs> That basket is confirmed three points. Just to get the final word, Gina Cross went to the monitor because it came at the buzzer just to make sure that Jackson's shot got off in time. It did. And that means you just stretched out the smiles and the celebration on the bench a little bit more. Eight point game after one. All right, Kelsey, thanks very much. Yeah, maybe it's going to be upsets Monday here, Tamika, after the higher seeds went 16-0 and yesterday already here. Wright State surprising Arkansas at the end of one quarter. They ended the quarter on a 7 nothing run, keeping Arkansas scoreless for two and a half minutes. And out of the quarter break, Arkansas goes to Chelsea Dungy, and she'll go to the free throw line. Well, I'm sure that was by design. Chelsea Dungy trying to figure out a way to get the ball in her hand. I said this earlier, she is the head of the snake, and I really do feel like as she goes, the team goes, although they have other players that can step up and make big plays, Dungy has been the one consistent factor all season long. She has a team high six so far. That ends a 7 nothing run for Wright State. Again, the rebounding. It's going to be the number we're really going to track as Wright State was plus eight in rebounding margin in that first quarter. Jada Wright turned around. I think she was a little surprised to find no one right up on top of her, but it was last <laughs> touched by Arkansas, so say the officials. Uh, no one in front of her initially, then Chelsea Dungy came out of nowhere. Shot clock down to two, down to one, and they beat the clock again. This is the third circus shot that this team has had, and when it when it feels good, you gotta let it go. Even if it's not how you drew it up, Baker <laughs> with the steal. Baker gets it back and waits in right state, is on top by 10 in the first half over Arkansas. I you know it's interesting. You look at the scoreboard. It's only Arkansas is only down 10, and what brings them back in the game is shots like that. Of course, Destiny Slocum doesn't hit that shot, but everybody knows Arkansas when they get their three-point shot going, when they feeling good and they're getting up and down the floor. That's how they stay in games. And Angel Baker comes back again. First player. And Mike Neighbors takes a timeout here, upset with his team as Wright State is now on top by 12. And Wright State is going at it strong. You see right there, taking it to the hoop. And I think that has to be one of the keys of the game. Getting the ball down low, get the ball up the court. Andrew Baker, you can't stop me now. What a first half so far for Wright State. It starts on the defensive end, Tamika Catchings. I know you love that. Oh, you know I love it. It's all about the defensive end, and Angel Baker has been a part of that. You see right there, the steal, the make, and then, of course, this is the shot that we saw from Destiny Jackson at the end of the first quarter. So they have continued to ride off of that 13-2 run in the last three, four minutes. Forcing Arkansas to take an early timeout here in the second quarter. Thomas tries to take it inside and will head to the free throw line. Hale with the foul. Coming up next on ESPN, the NCAA Women's Championship. First round continues. Mount St. Mary's takes on Maryland. Then Michigan State takes on Iowa State. That's followed by Marist and Louisville. And then at 10, Wyoming and UCLA. All games are also available on the ESPN app.
Louisville, the number two seed in this Alamo region. I think they'll have their hands full with Marist. I mean, Marist is a team probably deserved a little bit of a higher seeding. The MAC champs, they've got five wins all time in the NCAA tournament, so it could be uh, one to watch as we go along. We've already proven today with the BYU win over Rutgers that anything is possible here in day two, as Arkansas has found out here in the early going. Well, I think it's one of those things, the NCAA tournament, and especially this year, we've talked about this all season long, Eric. They're really, because of the lack of games and because of COVID and because of all of the different things, we really haven't had to get a real taste of how teams are. And we're starting to find out just how good teams can, can be this late in the season. So coming into tournament play, what happened? Some teams are rising to the occasion. Some teams are still getting better, and some teams are kind of leveling out. So NCAA tournament, anything can happen. Dungy with the tie-up, possession arrow, keeps it with Wright State 11 to shoot for the Raiders. That won't drop it again on the offensive glass, and another tie-up as Frierson was fighting on the boards. And the arrow will give it to Arkansas. Yeah, Fireson looked a little upset. Might have looked like an over-the-back call. Not able to get that one, though. Ramirez from the corner won't drop. One and done as Baker's got the rebound. Yeah, it's interesting. Arkansas has gotten some really good looks. So Ramirez has missed a few shots. We're not used to seeing her miss as many of those. But they're going to keep shooting. And an offensive foul called on Wright State. right on the charge and Trina Merriweather will take the timeout 709 to go in the second quarter run point game Arkansas is a team that scores on average 83 points a game but they struggled against Ole Miss in the SEC tournament Tamika shot 32 percent from the field they've been good all season long but in the postseason the defense get dialed up a little bit by Ole Miss and now Wright State who's on top by 11 and a foul called on the Raiders out of the timeout. Well, you'll see sometimes when your shot's not falling, you can almost see more of a directive. Chelsea Dungy is the player that will take the ball to the basket. They're trying to get more action around the paint. I think you got to sometimes look at you start inside and then you work your way outside. Arkansas is a team, they like to start their offense. They always start their offense from the outside, inside. But when your shots aren't falling, you got to find another way to score. Second personal foul on Roberson, so she'll head to the bench. Ramirez on the pull-up for two. Great set up by Slocum, back and forth, just that little handoff, get, Slocum, or get uh, Ramirez wide open. I think Ramirez is a player who would love to have a lot of success and lead Arkansas on a deep run in this tournament. She's from San Antonio. Started her career at TCU, has had success the last couple of years at Arkansas, mostly from outside the three-point line, but sometimes inside the three-point line. Well, that one-two pull-up, she's really good at. She gets her, gets her rhythm, gets right into a jump shot. She's so good, but Slocum did a great job. Just kind of that brush screen she set gave her enough room to see the basket. Thomas picked up the foul, her first. Imani Jefferson, the freshman. Outstanding first year for Wright State. Six points, five boards in that championship game that they won 53-41. Well, she's a player that Trino raved about and just said when you watch her on defense, you can't help but almost get hooked on defense because of the way she plays and how aggressive she is. Arkansas now two of 11 from outside the three-point line, again on the season, making on average almost 10 a game, which is good for 
eighth in the country. Baker, got it, it's 4-3. Eric, right, they, they look comfortable. They're, you can see the score right there, but from the beginning, they look comfortable. In their warm-up, they look comfortable. Coming out, the first possession, they have looked comfortable. They've looked comfortable on offense, and they've looked comfortable on defense. And I think it's, when you're looking at trying to beat a team, you're trying to figure out where is a way, where is an area that you can get them out of their comfort zone, and they're flowing. In no hurry now, the shot clock comes down to seven. Drive, spin, rejected by Thomas. Daniels on the push for two. Two chairs go down. <laughs> <laughs> As Daniels with the deep follow through after that one dropped down. Yeah, and because of that play, you see Coach Neighbor is yelling, <laughs> got to get the chairs out of the way. It might be too close to the to the baseline. You really think that's what he's yelling at the official about? Come on, Tamika. Probably, or the foul, <laughs> or the foul. Probably the first one, right? The foul first. Oh, another offensive rebound and a second chance for Wright State. Jefferson puts it back. Arkansas getting... Out rebounded 19 to 6 with seven offensive rebounds for Wright State. And no offensive rebounds for Arkansas, which isn't a surprise. That's usually not a number they care too much about. They'll get back defensively. But it is a glaring defense right now, and it has helped Wright State to a 14 point lead as we approach four to go in the first half. Ramirez will track it down off the miss. Dungy. Nope. There's the first offensive rebound for Arkansas, and they'll reset. Well, Slocum and Arkansas, they, they want to get out in the open court, and that the drive that they're looking for, but they're not able to get second chance points. They've had the opportunities for second chance, but they haven't. Right now, Wright State had eight points off a sec or eight points off of the offensive rebound. Saw Trina Merriweather tell her team to slow it down. Back into the hands of Baker. And foul called on Destiny Jackson. Well, that's what we're looking at. The offensive rebound, Slocum tried to stay in front, but in staying in front, gets herself out of position. And Imani Jefferson, yes. Arkansas minus 13 right now. Again, on the season, a minus eight. But in their eight losses, their average rebound margin is a minus 16. So that's the trend here in this game so far as they're down by 14 against Arkansas. Dungy can't get that to drop, but she will go back to the free throw line. That's two on Jackson. So Roberson's got two, Hale with two, and now Jackson with two. Well, she just got that one offensive call for the offensive screen. Destiny Jackson, and then comes down trying to guard Chelsea Dungey. As we mentioned, first trip to the NCAA tournament for this Arkansas program since 2015, but Chelsea Dungy played in the NCAA tournament as a freshman with Oklahoma into the second round, had 16 points, and they lost to Washington, a team coached by her current head coach, Mike Neighbors. Maybe that would be inspiration right there. Now Dungy with experience in the tournament, Destiny Slocum, with Maryland and Oregon State, tie up, jump ball, give it to Wright State. Been a lot of tie ups in this first half. Been good to see just the intensity. And you know, I think with Arkansas, Wright State, that's how they play. They play aggressive offense, defense. That's just how they play. Arkansas would like to see them get themselves going, get the energy higher, get back into the flow of the game the way that they know how to play and that we have gotten so accustomed to watching them play.
Baker ducks in with the shot clock at one. Barnum, after setting the screen, gets the dish and gets to the basket for her first two. Aaron Barnum coming off a season-high 25 minutes, Tamika, her last game against Ole Miss at 6.7 boards. She's someone who has provided some good minutes off the bench, the redshirt sophomore from Little Rock. Can't hold on to that one. Batted out of bounds, and it'll be Wright State basketball. Be sure to tune in to ESPN and the ESPN app Thursday at 7. NC State will take on Colorado State in the first game of the NIT quarterfinal doubleheader. Visit NCAA.com. The home for all 90 NCAA championships. Arkansas shooting 32% from the field, Tamika. That is a glaring number. 22 points on the scoreboard for the Razorbacks right now with two minutes to go in the half. Not the first quarter, in the half. Well, Arkansas, sometimes they rely too much on that outside shot. And the few times that they have attacked and got two feet into the paint. They have looked and have been really effective as Angel Baker gets that ball to, dro to drop. How many times have they beaten the shot clock? Three times <laughs> to get field goals to drop and the game clock at the end of the quarter once. So everything dropping right now for Wright State. Answered back quickly by Arkansas. Barnum. I know if you just talked about Barnum being able to step into game and to play your role. Taylor Thomas is the starter, but Barnum has come in and given some quality minutes thus far. Barnum's going to try to push it right here. Check it, it's Davis with the push. And then hustling back is Frierson to knock it out of bounds. As you see the end of the shot clock, Baker is able to get it up and get the roll. Well, first team all conference for the second straight year, Junior, as Dungy on the baseline out of bounds play found by Ramirez. Baker, you can tell an experienced player, even with the shot clock winding down, she still knew she had time for a fake. Calmly stepped in, got the roll. High caliber guard for this Wright State team. Final minute of the half. Drained it for three. I'm surprised that Arkansas has allowed that many open looks. Angel Baker keeps catching the ball. If there's anybody on the court for Wright State that you need to know where she is at all times, it's Angel Baker. And, of course, from the Arkansas side, it's Chelsea Dungy. So that wide open look just can't happen for Arkansas. Final 10 seconds. Wright State. Defensively got there again and drew the foul against Arkansas with seven seconds to go. Kelsey and the crew standing by coming up at halftime with the AT&T 5G halftime report. BYU with the first upset of the tournament. Georgia gets their win earlier today. They play in this Alamo region. They knocked off Drexel from outside. That one won't go down. One of the few shots to beat the buzzer. That did not go down. Tamika Catchings, Wright State, the 13th seed with a 12-point lead over Arkansas at the break. 26 points for Arkansas is a new season low. Their previous low for a half, the first half, was 28. Their last game against Ole Miss, so they're trying to find their offense. And meanwhile, they've got to try to find Angel Baker, who had 18 First half points, 12-point lead for Wright State over Arkansas at halftime in Austin. Kelsey, all yours. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Just about ready for the start of the third quarter. Wright State 
A surprise so far. They're up by 12 over the number four seed, Arkansas. The winner of this game will take on the winner of Missouri State and UC Davis. That game coming up later this evening. Eric and Tamika back with you. Very impressive first half defensively. Some timely shots offensively in that first half for Wright State. You really think this game will be decided by these next three, four minutes here as we start the third quarter. Yeah, Eric, I think it's really going to be set. The tone will be set in the first three minutes of this game. Arkansas, if they want to win this game, they've got to come out with more energy. The body language we saw at the end of the first half is going to be critical for them going into the beginning of this uh, third quarter. How impressed were you with Angel Baker in that first half, Tamika? Well, I mean, you look at those numbers right there. She's been the aggressor, and she's helped Wright State get this lead 18 points. But more impressive is the eight rebounds that are with the 18 points. So she's been aggressive, and she's led this team. We have seen Arkansas, and throughout the season, they've had a great season, but they've been in very close games all year. They really haven't blown teams out all season long, but they can go on runs. And they come out with a Ramirez three for the first points of the third quarter. Then an easy one missed on the outside, inside by Wright State. Well, this is what you need. Michaela Daniels, you could tell already, being able to push the ball up the court. Amber Ramirez, it's a good look when she knocked down her first shot in the second half. Slocum, who struggled in the first half, open on the turnaround. We will continue to track the rebounding numbers. Wright State was a plus 13 in margin in that first half. Jada Wright will try it from outside. Wright gets her hands in there to try to take it away, but it will be Arkansas ball. Well, it's interesting that Wright was able to get directly to the basket, which means that nobody boxed her out. If you're going to win the battle of the board with Wright State, if you want to get even and, and be able to win the battle, you've got to learn how to box out players. Wright State's largest lead in the first half was 14. They are up 12 at halftime. Big block and a technical foul called on Imani Jefferson. Yeah, you've you got to control Tyler your emotion. Yeah. Great sound right there. You could hear Tyler Frierson, the senior leader on this team, right away say, no, Imani. And then when the freshman was starting to complain about it, Frierson said, no, you looked at her, like knowing the things you cannot do that are going to result in a technical. Well, those are three points. Those are extra points that you're giving Arkansas, and they are a team that feeds off of this energy. So. The energy of the game, the flow can change just like that. So Imani Jefferson, got to be careful. Made a great play by getting that block by Slocum, but now gave an extra point back to Arkansas. So Trina Merriweather did not agree. Discussing it with Jenna Cross. Ramirez has unlimited range, but can't get this one to drop. And one of the things you'll watch is Wright State, they like to get up and down, but they also like to set up in their half-court offense. They've hit a couple of shots at the buzzer in the first half. They use the shot clock. They force you to defend for the whole shot clock as they get another great look down low by Frierson. That's first points for Frierson, just her second field goal attempt. Dungy on the drive. You can see how she draws attention. And on the drive, a foul called on Jada Wright. And look at Fireson doing her work early. Thomas can't handle that. Nice little look over the left shoulder. Second personal foul on right and Dungey, who attempted six free throws in the first half, has two here in the opening minutes of the third quarter. Well, sometimes that's how Dungey's able to keep herself in the flow of the game. Getting to the free throw line, we see Six points. I mean, out of her points that she has, out of the nine points, five of those have come from the free throw line. So that's how she's able to stay engaged in the game. Good job by Taylor Thomas, who stayed engaged on the glass, kept it alive, and here's a second chance for Arkansas. Dungey batted away, tapped out of bounds by Roberson. Six to shoot for the Razorbacks. 
Destiny Jackson will check in, and Wright will check out. Baker defending Dungey. Dungey rips through, can't get it, and Baker tipped the rebound to Frierson. And you always see one, two, three right players going down low. Jackson. Comes up short, and it will be Arkansas basketball. No one touched it for the Razorbacks. Frierson will check out. Again, she'll play three or four-minute bursts, rest that knee a little bit, and then she'll come back in. Looked like they were trying to make an effort to get it to her in the post. She had the one basket, but they couldn't get her that most recent trip. Well, Taylor Thomas, that's a, a big responsibility down low when you got to figure out a way to guard Frierson, and Frierson was putting her to work. Dungey won't drop. Baker spinning, hanging, but that won't drop. Offensive rebound and trouble underneath for Wright State. Battle for it, won by the Raiders and a foul called on Dungey. We'll sort it out while they do that. I'll tell you that coming up next on ESPN2, the NCAA Women's Championship first round continues with these matchups, Belmont, Gonzaga, then Troy takes on Texas A&M. That's followed by Bradley and Texas at 10, South Dakota and Oregon. We'll wrap it all up. All games are also available on the ESPN app. Two, two personal fouls on Dungy. That was the call. Shot clock winding down. Baker's going to have to heave it up. Will it go down again? No. Thomas the rebound. And that's what right they did continue to do. They've used the shot clock and have forced the defense to have to play the full shot clock. Sometimes it goes and sometimes it doesn't. Daniels was bumped. Foul called on Roberson. I like seeing Daniels. will be three on Roberson. I like seeing Sorry, Daniel be aggressive to the basket. You know, Slocum, that's what she does. Daniel, most of the time when she's able to get in the middle of the paint, she creates the shot for herself. Or with the post player diving from the side, she's able to get those nice little dump passes. Daniel's a two-year starter at the point for Arkansas. Has to settle for one of two. Now yeah, we're not used to seeing Arkansas shoot free throws and not make them. 64% right now, nine for 14, and right state is five for five. Open three here for the Raiders is good. Jefferson with the three. She's in the double figures now with 10. Daniels got into trouble, threw it in the backcourt, and it'll be a turnover. Arkansas not doing a good job of facing out, but on the defensive end, they're not communicating. Leave a wide open Imani Jefferson on the side. And while Trina talked earlier about them not being able to knock down shots, to tell you what, <laughs> shooting 43% from field goal and from the three, 57%. Those numbers don't match up to what Trina Merriweather said. Her. She's been fired up about a few things here. <laughs> That's tipped away, and a foul's going to be called on Jefferson. That'll be the third on Jefferson. That technical was her second personal foul, so now three for Jefferson, three for Roberson. Or at least it was a smart foul. I mean, not, yes, you don't want her to have three fouls, but Arkansas thrives on being able to get in that transition game. You give them an easy bucket like that, more than likely you're going to spark the run. So that was a smart foul. Dungey 
Looked like she had nowhere to go, and I think Trina Merriweather is going to be really fired up this time. Foul called on Wright State, and that staff is going out there to try to calm down the players. They thought this was good, solid defense on Dungey. Arms came down, foul was called. Timeout, third quarter in Austin. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Oh, we talked about the connection, the friendship of the two head coaches, Trina Merriweather for Wright State and Mike Neighbors for Arkansas, but there's a big Arkansas connection on the bench for Wright State. To Neil Adams, Arkansas class of 99. She was on Gary Blair's Final Four team back in 1998 in Fayetteville. She hit the game winner in the Elite Eight that sent the Razorbacks on to the Final Four. Then they went on to win the WNIT title in 1999. So a little bit of Arkansas history on that Wright State bench. And she said that she cheered for Arkansas in every other game but today. <laughs> it's always good to see some of the former players going back in the game. And while they might not be on the same bench of the team that they used to down the jersey with, it's still great to see a lot of our players in the game. The foul was on Hale, her third personal. You can see the three with three for Wright State right now. Arkansas has brought it down to nine. They were down by 14 in the first half. And they gotta figure out, like they, for a minute, had a mismatch on the post. Al Davis making a difference right now for Arkansas, disruptive on defense. She was fouled. And that will send Davis to the free throw line because already, Arkansas in the bonus with four and a half minutes to go into third quarter, and Roberson's got four. Yeah, like they not doing the things they did earlier, but I will give credit is that Arkansas, they have changed the intensity. Marquisha Davis on the floor, making some of the defensive plays. Sounds like they're making it. Correction here, perhaps. Have to count up the total number of team fouls. I've got six on the board here. And Jada Roberson, Roberson will take a seat on the bench. Yeah, she's going out. We did not have a change of team possession on that last play, so the ball will be inbounded by Arkansas at the end line. So Jenna Cross laying it out. And the Razorback ball. And Dungy looked like she was going to make the cut. At least that's what Amber Ramirez thought, but Dungy slammed on the brakes, and it's a turnover for the Razorbacks, who have turned it over nine times. They take good care of the basketball. Third in the country and fewest turnovers per game. Well, it's only good when you're able to convert and get a better look. So, like they looking for a good shot on the offensive end. They go back inside Frierson, defended well by Barnum, and out of bounds with Baker making contact with the baseline. It'll be Arkansas ball. Well, Baker has not scored yet in the third quarter. He's had 18 points at halftime and really has not looked at the basket to take shots. Dungy has it knocked away, then it's kicked out of bounds by Wright State. No reset of the shot clock. Number 13 seed Wright State, number four Arkansas. 
Razorbacks with Chelsea Dungy leading the way. Trying to come back after falling behind by 14 in the first half. Dungy knocks down a three. She's got 15. That's lead Ar leading Arkansas in scoring. And the Razorbacks have brought it within six. Well, we knew that there was going to be a change in the way that they would play. And it really has. You've seen Arkansas up the energy, up the intensity on the defensive end. But then offensively, Dungy continued to get to the basket. This is a rare. She stepped back, knocked down those three. You can never go underneath the screen when Chelsea Dungy is involved. So Slocum will check out. And Frierson will go to the free throw line, shoot a couple. Puck drops on an ESPNU men's ice hockey doubleheader when Michigan and Minnesota Duluth face off Friday 4 Eastern in the Fargo Regional Semis, also available on the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. One of two for Frierson. Jada Wright will come back in. Uh, Jada Wright. In the moment that she'd been on the court, she got two points. She played 14 minutes and really trying to figure out a way to get herself going on the offensive end. We saw a few plays she wasn't able to get in. Ramirez off the mark, heads out of bounds. It'll be Wright State basketball. You saw both teams struggling from the field here in this third quarter. And Arkansas's struggles from outside the three-point line continue. Two for 12 in the first half, four for 16 for the game. And then a trip is called, I believe, on Daniels. It is. Yeah, I wonder if it is the flow of the game. You know, right state, they like to slow down the game. They will run if they need to. They will run if there's an open look and they can get that transition basket. But for the most part, you'll see them get past half court and settle the play down. They will use the full shot clock to get their shots off. Arkansas is more of an up and down team. They want to run. They want to get those shots off. And so that could be a little bit of the difference in just the flow and the intensity of the game. Corner three is short, rebound and put back, pulled down by Barnum. Batted back and Daniels has to go back and get it. Well, you said flow. There is no flow in this game right now. Does that benefit Wright State? Dungy on the drive and a blocking foul is called on Jefferson. That'll be the fourth on Jefferson. I see Dungy, you always know she's going to the basket and Jefferson not able to get two feet set. So Dungy going to the basket when you both fall down. That's the look that the referee got is the, all, or the blocking call. Chelsea Dungy back to the free throw line. Well, in a game with very little flow, scoring points with the clock stop, benefiting Arkansas right now. They are 7 of 10 from the free throw line this quarter. Wright State is 1 for 2 from the free throw line. And Arkansas now down by 5. Frierson. On the pass. So you see Jefferson staying out on the floor with the four personal fouls. Roberson on the bench right now with four. Well, you got to keep the guard play going. And between Jefferson and Roberson, your two best defensive guards, one of them has to stay on the floor to allow this, the same intensity that they have in the front of that press, the front of the zone that they have. So you, you kind of have to take your chances with one or the other. That was the third personal foul on Chelsea Dungy. As Tamika mentioned, it's been a quiet quarter so far for Angel Baker. 18 first half points, hasn't scored in the third quarter. Frierson inside, can't get it to go. 
Davis will head to the free throw line. Yep, attack the basket, attack the basket, get to the free throw line. Not only do you get the extra shot, but you also stop the clock. And you just talked about that, Eric, the advantage of stopping the clock, being able to get some free back or free look at the basket from the free throw line. Well, you're piling up foul trouble for Wright State. That's three fouls now on Wright. We talked about Frierson being able to play in bursts because of her knee pain. So she's going to sit down right now. So managing minutes, managing fouls is going to be a big challenge here for Wright State with 12 minutes to go in regulation. Well, I think Frierson's more upset about those shots that she just missed on the other end. Two shot point blank, but she's underneath the basket. It's hard to get that ball up. Points continue to pile up at the free throw line for Arkansas. It's helped the Razorbacks on this 9-1 run to bring it down to a one possession game. Destiny Jackson. Back outside Baker. Baker travel. Yeah, Baker 10 turnovers now for Wright State. Baker's not looking to be aggressive. She's looking to pass the ball. So it's going to be interesting when we come back from the break. Will Wright State continue to pick it up on the defensive end? Thank you, Kelsey. Tight one here, third quarter. Alamo region, Arkansas was down by 12 at halftime. Thanks to free throws, they have closed it here in the third quarter. You can see the shooting in the third quarter. Wright State, 2 of 12 from the field. And Arkansas, 9 of 12 from the free throw line. So six points in the quarter for Wright State. Nine points just at the free throw line for Arkansas. It's not sexy, but it's effective catch. And that's what it is. It's about getting to the free throw line. They have been aggressive. They're aggressors in the third quarter. You see, Arkansas pays off when you make your free throw. Baker with a beautiful handle in the backcourt, took it all the way to the paint, got the basket and the foul, her first points of the third quarter. Well, and this is what Wright State, they need more Baker. Baker had 18 points in the first half alone, her first two shots. And it looks so good when she does it. Quiet for too long. MVP of the Horizon Tournament can turn it up when needed. Went for 23 points on 10 of 16 shooting in the championship game. She has a game high 21 today. After the miss by Ramirez, Wright State will walk it up in the final minute. In the previous seven trips for Wright State, they were 0 for 5 from the field, so Baker changed that, and now a tie-up. Jump ball, possession arrow will keep it with Wright State. Uh, Jada Wright really struggling. She's trying to make a move. She had the first move. All she had to do was turn around and do a little baby hook, but trying to do too many moves with three defenders down low. She could tell she, you could sense the frustration. Baker works with the screen, weaves through traffic, and gets it. Now Eric, she must have heard us talking about her in the break, but Angel Baker's come alive in five points. Arkansas will hold for a final shot. Barnum. Got some contact, nothing there. Final heave will not be made by Wright State, and that will do a good finish to the quarter for Wright State. Arkansas had crawled back to a one-possession game, but Wright State's up by eight after three. And what do you say? Angel Baker to the basket. Let it float, let it go. You see the muscle. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? 
Well, only one 14 seed or higher has won a tournament game. That was Harvard over Stanford back in 1998. But when it comes to 13 seeds, it's happened before. It hasn't happened a lot. Six times in 106 tries. <laughs> and Trina Merriweather certainly hoping the 107th try is the charm as her 13 seeded Wright State Raiders lead the four seed Arkansas going into the fourth quarter. 49 41. Arkansas possession to start the fourth. Eric Freed, Tamika Catchings, and our crew. Destiny Slocum turned around. She was wide open and it opened a second time, and Arkansas comes up empty that trip. Well, that's the one thing I was going to say. Destiny Slocum is going to have to be more aggressive when she's out there. The difference between Arkansas, when Slocum is on, you can tell the difference. And we've seen her. I mean, she can literally light it up from outside that mid-range game, getting the ball to the basket. She hasn't been aggressive, as aggressive as she normally is. And I thought that first possession would, would get her started. Baker goes for a tumble and it's a traveling violation. Well, statistician Dan Ferran tells us that Arkansas has missed, after that last miss, eight layups today. And that led to that Mike Neighbors look <laughs> after the last miss for Arkansas. Ramirez. We'll try it from two. That's yeah, a good shot for Ramirez. Shot just not falling. Arkansas has now fallen below the 30% mark field in this game. They are shooting 29% on the season, 45% from the field. Good drive, but it won't drop. A trip to the free throw line coming up for Jefferson. Well, if you looked at that last defensive possession, Dungy was all over Angel Baker, not allowing her to get the ball. And Imani Jefferson makes a, or Jada Robertson. Imani Jefferson makes a great move to the basket. Oh, Jefferson at the line, 69% from the free throw line. She'll get another. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 starting Saturday on CBS and TBS, or you can stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Jefferson with 11 came in averaging eight points a game. Daniels can't get that one to drop, and it's batted out of bounds by Wright State. Good to see Arkansas battling on the offensive board. All right, now they're sitting with six offensive boards, so get back in the game. Got to get those rebounds. Dungy's got 17, but she struggled from the field. Three for 11, make it three for 12. And again, Wright State in no hurry to bring it up across half court, approaching eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Jefferson. Jefferson's the one who got it and put it back in for the Raiders. Offensive rebounds have been the name of the game. 12 offensive rebounds for Wright State. They are out rebounding Arkansas 38 to 22 in this game. Daniels with a step back deep three and a timeout called by Arkansas. 7.40 to go in the fourth. Eight point game in Austin. If Wright State was going to pull the upset here today, they were going to have to dominate on the boards. They were going to have to come up with stops, keep Arkansas from getting their high-octane offense going. And Tamika Catching, so far they've been able to do that, and they've made the most of those second-chance opportunities. Well, yes, and they just continue to battle down low. They continue to get in, and it's like all four or five players getting in. But second-chance point, 12-1. to one. So you see the battle down low. This team, like you said, Eric, they knew that if they wanted to have a chance, defense and rebound 
that's what we heard from Coach Merriweather. If we want to win, it's all about the way we defend and the way we get on the offensive board. And certainly when you look at the score and you think about the pace, this is fitting right in with the Wright State game plan as Arkansas brings a little pressure to try to speed things up here against the Raiders. On the drive, won't drop, and Davis has the rebound for Arkansas. Back to Dungy. Chelsea Dungy. First team All-SEC, third team All-American. She's got the ability to bring this Arkansas team back. 20 points now for Dungy. Uh, Jada Wright trying to go underneath the screen for Chelsea Dungy. She's getting frustrated because she did not get over. Dungy's out there going side to side. You got to figure out a way to get over. Arkansas continues with the pressure. Now they'll settle back in in the half court inside of seven minutes to go. Winner moves on to round two to take on the winner of the Missouri State UC Davis game. Season is over for the loser. Wright State has been in control throughout this game, but right now it's a five point game. Baker couldn't get it, thought she was fouled. And it'll be Arkansas ball. Yeah, you gotta stay within the game plan. Wright State did such a good job in the first half of attacking the basket. I know they like to use the clock, but Use the clock officially going toward the basket, not going side to side. When you go north-south, get into the basket, that's always better than going west to east. Wright State goes zone, which can be dangerous against this good shooting team from Arkansas when they're on, but right now they're not on. Stripped away from Dungy, and Wright State's got it again. Uh, right, they got lucky right there. Michaela Daniels is an excellent shooter, especially when she had that much time to prepare. Here's Angel Baker, defended by Davis. Shot clock winds down again. Frierson's got it back. Frierson's got it this time. Yeah. Inside out, inside out a couple of times. Frierson able to get her feet set for the layup. Daniels with the runner. She'll go to the free throw line. And you see it in, you see it out. She keeps reposting, reposting. Taylor Thomas not able to get Frierson outside of the paint. <laughs> the bench loves it. Frierson picks up the foul. That's her second personal again. Jefferson has remained on the floor, the freshman with four personal fouls. Roberson also with four, but she's on the bench at the moment. And Michaela Daniels, 81% from the free throw line to shoot a couple. Arkansas has scored 17 of their 49 points at the free throw line. Thomas will check out. Frierson goes to the bench for Wright State. Five and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Back to a five point game. Baker dribbles into trouble. And Dungy had her foot <laughs> on the ball with her backside out of bounds. And that will give the ball to Wright State. I don't know if that's a change of possession or what. <laughs> you got to like the fight right there. <laughs> I've seen some interesting tie-ups in my day. she was calling jump ball. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea going with the foot versus hands tie-up is a new one. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Desperate times call for desperate measures, <laughs> Tamika. And when your season's on the line, you do whatever it takes. It will be Wright State ball. Now, they haven't gotten it across half court yet. Now that's batted away by Daniels. You can see they've only got less than a second because the shot clock's at 21. You've got 10 to get it across half court, and Arkansas is wondering why the clock didn't start or at least bring the shot clock down to 20. Exactly. And you take it to the baskets, calling timeout, timeout Trina Merriweather, yes. 
Well, Arkansas has tried to make a difference with their defense, dialing up against Wright State. We'll take the quick timeout as well. Alamo region, number one seed Stanford with an impressive win last night over Utah Valley. Louisville will get going today. They are the number two seed in this bracket. And Georgia with a victory, they're the number three seed in the Alamo region. Winner of this game taking on Missouri State, UC Davis winner. And off the turnover, Dungy's going to go to the free throw line. And that is it on Jefferson. If the foul's on Jefferson, that's five. And the foul is on Jefferson, but Chelsea Dungy does a great job. Like I said before, when she knows how to get the foul called, she gets the steal right here. Jefferson, she goes into the body, creates contact, and that is her fifth foul. So that is it for the freshman who finishes with 13 points, six rebounds in 31 minutes. Now Jefferson has done a great job so far this, this tonight. I mean, just the way that she plays, she's been able to stay on the floor with four fouls for a long time and had learned how to play without fouling. The previous play is under review for an intentional foul. Well, certainly not on the contact by Jefferson. She was. Was it something after the fact? Oh, maybe that's what they're looking for here. Dungy taking a little contact, certainly selling it, but Wright did make some contact there. Is that what they're looking at? You heard what Jenna Cross said. They're looking to see if there was an intentional foul. It was not anything that we saw from Jefferson, but perhaps from Jada Wright. So they are, we've been told by our crew on the ground in Austin, that they are looking at that Jada Wright contact on Dungy. Uh, coming up on the backside, got to be able to slow yourself down, get another look at it. Now the whistle obviously blown. Yeah, that's definitely well after whist the whistle. There was some contact there. I don't think there's any doubt that Dungy helped to sell it, but that doesn't <laughs> erase the fact that there was contact from Wright after the whistle. And we saw the official's arm up there, so that's what Jenna Cross and her crew are looking at right now. And once they've made the final decision, she'll let us know what they've decided. Will there be a personal foul on Jefferson, and then also an intentional foul. But first, the officials are going to talk about it. Five-point game here in the Alamo region. Wright State, the number 13 seed on top of the four seed, Arkansas. Wright State led by 12 at halftime. They are up by as much as 14 in the first half. On the previous play, we had a foul on number five. It's going to cause her to foul out. After the whistle and the play was dead, we have an intentional foul on 23. There will be two shots for Arkansas and the ball at half court. So that is a key call in this game. Jada Wright making contact with Chelsea Dungy after the initial foul. So here is the foul called on Jefferson. That's where she fouls out. Then after the whistle, contact there from Wright into Dungy, who went down. They went to the monitor and determined, as you heard from lead referee Jenna Cross, that it's an intentional foul. So Dungy will go to the line to shoot two Tamika catchings, and it'll be Arkansas ball. And the free throw line has kept Arkansas in this game here in Austin. Well, that has also changed the momentum of the game. You see Arkansas not able to knock down those shots. I mean, they're shooting 30%, but what has kept them alive is the free throw shooting, and all of the players have got to the free throw line. But I would say Chelsea Dungy right now, 12 for 14 for the afternoon. 
Wright State is 8 of 10 as a team from the free throw line. Overall, Arkansas has made 19 of their 51 points at the free throw line. So after the intentional foul, it's two free throws and possession for the Razorbacks. Here's Destiny Slocum. Slocum. Davis. Off balance gets it. Arquisha Davis providing a boost off the bench for Arkansas. Mostly there for her defense and bringing the intensity there, but contributing with offense down to a one-point game. We talked about intensity, Eric. That's what we've that's been the name of the game. And Arkansas, you can tell they have figured out a way to increase the intensity. Barnum working down low. It's been a huge spark for this Arkansas Razorback team. Roberson scores on one end, Barnum on the other end. It will be Wright State basketball. Yeah, great job right there. Keeps it in, takes it in. Being aggressive to the basket and Arkansas this second half, they've been aggressive, but I would say really this fourth quarter, they put on this full court press and Wright State has struggled. They've had a couple of turnovers, saw the last turnover that led to the foul. Angel Baker, the go-to player for Wright State. She has 23 points. She's got the basketball defended by Davis. Baker spinning, can't get it, and Slocum's got the rebound. Destiny Slocum has struggled from the field, but coming up with a key rebound. Arkansas's last lead was in the first quarter when they are on top seven to six. Davis. Can't get it, and Wright State will hold on to the lead with three and a half minutes to go. All right, they will set up, and you see Arkansas pulling that full-court press back in. Taylor Thomas will come in for Aaron Barnum. Arkansas will look to put the pressure on. Amber Ramirez back in the game as well as Davis takes a seat. She played well for Arkansas in her 13 minutes. Right. Wright State making their third all-time trip to the NCAA tournament, looking for their first NCAA tournament win. On the drive, Frierson can't get the put back. And then a foul is called on Arkansas. Baker got in the middle of things, and I think Daniels is the one who got whistled for the foul. Well, Baker came up, tried to get that steal, and Daniels turned around without the ball to try to get it. The right state third, will have another opportunity. Third personal foul on Daniels. Deep three on the way, but under the basket, right place, right time, was right. And then on the putback, right state, count it and the foul. Talk about Frierson down low. She was working the whole possession. Look at her. She just works and works and works and able to get that rebound. Taylor Thomas get called for the foul. <laughs> the big is always the ready. Senior from Long Beach, California, third team all conference on the all tourney team. Fought through knee problems throughout her career. Came up with a huge hoop. Couldn't get the free throw. She's got seven points, seven rebounds for Wright State. Three point lead. Tips. Good defense again by the Raiders. Into the hands of Baker. 
Baker gets aggressive on the drive, a little too aggressive. Offensive foul called on Angel Baker. Well, you saw Slocum setting up for the charge. She was waiting for her to come. She comes down the line. Slocum gets set. And Angel Baker gets caught for the foul. Yeah, good job by Slocum, too. She was well outside of the restricted arc. You saw Baker, I think, pointing and saying that she was in there. No, she was clearly out, so it's a charge. With 2.22 to go. First personal on Baker. Here's Dungey. Dungey will head back to the free throw line. Attempts number 15 and 16 for Chelsea Dungey, who came into this game leading the country in free throws made. It's been a big part of her offense, Tamika. It's been a critical part for Arkansas to hang tight with Wright State throughout this game. Yeah, free throws have been the name of the game, and it feels like Dungey knows when to get to the free throw line. She took a couple shots early on. Shots weren't falling. She figured out another way to go, and free throws have always been something that she's relied on. Well, Tamika, I know your calendar is all set, but I just want to remind everyone else some of the key dates coming up as the NCAA Women's Championship continues. Sweet 16 coming up Saturday and Sunday, then the Elite Eight, 29th and 30th, all leading up to the Final Four, San Antonio, April 2nd and April 4th. You're right, Eric. I already marked on my calendar. More pressure as Davis is back into the game for Arkansas. Tips. And a 10 count. Turnover, Wright State. Well, they call it 10 seconds, but the ball was in the air. Remember, Wright State's point guard, Imani Jefferson, fouled out with 5.06 to go here in the fourth quarter. So Wright State is down one of their trusted ball handlers. Trying to handle this pressure. Slocum. Dungey. Arkansas is in front. And you see the bench going crazy over there. Chelsea Dungey. 17 points in the second half. She has been crucial for this Arkansas team. Wright State hoping to get a rebound off the miss. Instead, it'll be Arkansas basketball. And here it is, the setup by Slocum and Dungey in rhythm for the three. That's the first assist for Slocum here today. She has struggled to find her rhythm offensively, but with the game on the line and this team of seniors, four fifth-year seniors, three fourth-year seniors, making the play when needed. So the foul's on Hale, her fourth. That sends Dungey back to the free throw line. Rare miss for Chelsea Dungey at the stripe here today. Ninety seconds to go. This, this round one up. matchup in Austin. Again, Arkansas not known for their defense, but this pressure has been affected for the Razorbacks, and they have Wright State in trouble. Into the hands of Baker. Baker. Corner three. Got it. Wright State answers back with just over a minute to go. One. Alexis Stover into the game. Davis answers on the other end. Back and forth in the final minute. Stolen by Barnum. Then kicked away as Barnum was carried into the front court. Barnum trying to control himself to be able to 
pick the ball up and give it to one of her guards, but in the process of doing that, it hit the bottom of her foot. Turnover number 15. So a debate and discussion here right in front of the Arkansas bench. It's going to be Wright State basketball. Alexis Stover, the senior, comes into the game and makes her eighth three-pointer of the season. What a clutch shot in the corner for Wright State. And now Wright State down by one with the ball. Roberson. Another three is good this time from Angel Baker. Unbelievable. Angel Baker stepped up when needed at the clutch shot right there. And you can always tell when somebody's ready to shoot, they get the ball. Davis's hand down just enough for Angel Baker to get a solid look at the basket. So Arkansas takes the quick timeout to advance it here in the final minute. Well, the three-point shot has been timely and effective for Wright State, Tamika. They're 6 of 12 today. It's not a big part of their offense. They only average four made a game, but with the game on the line, Baker delivers a three, and how about Alexis Stover who comes through her first minutes in the game and buries minutes of the second half, I should say, and buries a three-pointer. So a clutch shot in the corner from Stover, and then Baker with the three, and now Arkansas will advance it with the shot clock off. 29.1 to go in the fourth. We take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. Angel Baker had 18 first-half points. She was very quiet in the third quarter, but turned it up late in the third and has dialed it up here with a game on the line in the fourth. Well, she stepped up on her team. They needed her to step up. She's hit some big shots. And while she was silent in the third quarter, other players were still able to score. But Angel Baker has taken over down the stretch and really stepped up. That shot is a big-time shot. But we heard Coach Neighbors say what type of a player and how much he respected Baker and the way that she played. Jalen Mason is in for Arkansas. As they'll throw it into the backcourt for Daniels. Again, shot clock off. Arkansas will go to work. Ramirez. Will they look for the three to win or the two to tie? It's Ramirez looking for contact. No call. Rebound by Baker. And a foul with 10.8 to go. Now, no free throws yet because that's the fourth team foul on Arkansas. So, Wright State... Still has to get it into play. They have one timeout remaining. Well, great defense right there. Fires the hand straight up, making sure that she did not foul. That rebound by Angel Baker. If you need to get the rebound, you got to get in and get those. Baker with a double-double, 26 points, 11 rebounds. She's a perfect 3-for-3 three three from outside the three-point line. Michaela Daniels picked up her fifth personal foul. Again, four team fouls on Arkansas. So Wright State not shooting free throws yet with 10.8 to go. Officials still trying to straighten a few things out. And Jenna Cross will head over to the scores table. You see the reset. One timeout left for each team. Both teams in a bonus. We think they are looking at the game clock to see if 10.8 is the time that should be on there right now. So you can see what the officials are looking at right now. That's the rebound for Baker and fouled, and there's the arm up. And the clock stopped at 10.8. Maybe they'll put on two tenths. 
Additional time will be added. Clock will now change to 11.2. All right, they put on four tenths, so 11.2 on the clock. Well, I think this possession is going to be really important. Obviously, if you're right state, you're looking at this Arkansas defense, and you got to get the ball in and take care of the basketball. It's always going to be steal first and then foul. So from Arkansas' side, they're looking for the steal. If they don't get the steal, they're going to foul quick. Wright State will use their final timeout. They were trying to get it to Angel Baker. Baker is 64% free throw shooter, but she's been outstanding today overall. Three of three from the free throw line today. And it'll be a full timeout, so teams will take a seat. Wright State playing in the NCAA tournament for the third time for the third time playing an SEC team. 2019, they lost to Texas A&M. Angel Baker had 22 points in that game as a freshman. 2014, they lost to Kentucky. Today, trying to knock off an SEC team. No upsets yesterday, but early on today, getting to feel like this could be the day of upsets, and this would be a huge one. A 13 seed taking on a four seed. Well, it's really important, too, as you look at Wright State, Trina Merriweather trying to draw a play to get Angel Baker the ball. And, you know, honestly, sometimes when you start looking at press breaks, the more people you have in the backcourt, the harder it is to break a press. So trying to figure out a way for Wright State, obviously, to expand, extend the court and not get so caught up in the front court. And the same thing for Arkansas. They got, they're trying to figure out how to get the ball back. 11 seconds is a lot of time, so... Enough time to get a steal and get a score. They got to get it in, though. No timeouts left. They do into the hands of Roberson, and Roberson is fouled. 68% free throw shooter. Barnum picks up her first, but two free throws coming up here for Wright State. Arkansas with one timeout remaining, so they can use that timeout to advance it if they so choose, and certainly they'll do so. Let's see what happens here with the sophomore from Muskegon, Michigan, who was on the all-freshman team in the Horizon League last year. Struggled in the Horizon final. Has six points here today. Clutch moment for Jada Roberson. Big time play. Big time players make big time plays and stepping up to the free throw line, knocking down the first one. Swishes two free throws to make it a two possession game. That's clutch with a capital C from Jada Roberson, who picked up her fourth foul with 4.31 to go in the fourth quarter. Had to stay in the game because Jefferson fouled out with five minutes to go. And she delivers at the free throw line to make it 66 62. Well, Coach Merriweather said that this is the X factor. Jada Roberson is the X factor for this team. The way that she plays defense, the intensity that she plays with, and just the knack for the ball. Stepped up to the free throw line, knocked down those two shots. I mean, you can't say it any better than that. 68% free throw shooter <laughs> for the season. I think I just saw their defensive posture for defending the three-point line. <laughs> Hands straight up, stay away. Only six times has a 13 seed defeated a four seed. In 106 attempts, this is attempt number 107. Arkansas out of timeouts as Slocum will put it into play with 8.1 to go. Arkansas got to get a quick score. Got to get a quick score and then try to get the ball back, try to get the steal. Slocum finds Dungey off her hands. Dungey for three. No good. Rebound for Baker, who's fouled by Thomas with three tenths of a second to go. And the celebration is on for Wright State. Uh, they might have. They had a couple players that ran onto the floor. 
You can see the bench getting excited. Game's not over yet. <laughs> Arkansas making their first trip to the NCAA tournament since 2015. Seniors like Chelsea Dungy were hoping to make a deep tournament run. Angel Baker just waiting to put this one away for Wright State. Time when we added, the clock will be set to 1.7. So they add some time on the clock, but Chelsea Dungy knows she's done the math. Angel Baker leading the way with 26 points. Wright State has done it. Number 13 knocks off number four. The Raiders are moving on. And the celebration continues. First NCAA tournament win, Wright State. They came out, they had their game plan. Defend and rebound, Angel Breaker, wow. Just can't say enough, but look at the other players that stepped up and made big plays at the right time. A thriller in Austin, Wright State wins it. Let's get you to Mount St. Mary's in Maryland. Pam Ward and LaChina.